the Chama Valley Maths tutorial with Mr Gordon here. Um, I'm going to be looking at the um, Core Maths practice paper, paper two. I'm going to be looking at some of the st statistical questions. Um, so paper 2A, we're going to start with having a look at question three. So the question is asking, um, research in 2015 found that a number of, uh, the number of sleeping hours in any given day for adults can be modelled by a normal distribution with a mean of six hours and a standard deviation of 1.5 hours. Um, and we've got Michael who's claiming that the probability of a randomly chosen adult sleeping for more than seven hours in one day is less than a third. And we've got to sort of decide, is his claim justified? Okay, so we've got to kind of model this on a normal distribution and see what we come up with. So what I've done is I've, I've grabbed a... Uh, a normal distribution kind of a generic graph and we're going to try and put on our uh, points of interest so let me just check make sure everything's right on the board um, as you know the mean the mean should always be in the center so this value down here is going to be six this is from the the mean is six hours so I'm going to write that in there and I've got my standard uh, deviation which is 1.5 hours so that is um, the symbol for that. We're just going to say that that is 1.5. Okay, and the mean, obviously, we are going to use in this example, we have mu as the mean. So, okay, but the mean can also be, um, might be expressed as x bar. So I'll put that to the side. You may see it written like this the mean. And some examples might use another variable. So at this point, we've got. We've got mu as our symbol for, for the mean. Okay, so what are we really doing here? Well, let's mark on that what we're interested in is someone being chosen at random um, will be sleeping for more than seven hours. So, I mean, where is seven hours? Let's roughly mark it on. So, say roughly around here, we might be looking at seven hours. And we're looking for the probability that someone has more than seven hours sleep. So this area underneath the curve is the, the area that we're looking for. We're looking for the probability un underneath that area. So how do we do that? Well, we need to find out a Z score. So we can look it up in the table. And we're given these tables as part of the preliminary, preliminary material. Um, so let's try and work out if we can get a z-score to then go and look up. I've got the formula here. This is the uh, how we generate our z-scores. And basically we've got z equals our x value, so our observed value, which is 7. It's going to be our 7 here. Minus the mean, which is 6, all over the standard deviation. So z equals, and I've got my observed value, which is, um, sorry, yeah, 7 minus the mean, which we know is 6, and this is all over the standard deviation, which is 1.5, so 1.5. Okay, some of you are probably thinking, well, I could probably work that out in my head. I'm definitely going to go and use the calculator because I've got it with me, so there's no silly mistakes. Let's just type it in, and we've got 7 minus 6, all divided by 1.5. Okay, press equals. And we get two thirds. So our z score is two thirds. Okay. So let's have a look. Let's go to the table and see what's happening in the in the actual table of probabilities. So you can see we've got a, a, a long list of values here. The z scores are here. So the z scores are the values that you see down here and across here. Um, and the values inside, so the values that are inside the table, those are the probabilities. So I might highlight what I mean. So this area here, these are the probabilities that we're looking at. Now we don't have two thirds, we can't look up two thirds, there's no fractions, it's all decimalised around the sides. So we're going to have to go back and change that into a decimal. So if you're not sure what two thirds is, then your calculator, again, will tell you, if you press this button here, you've got the... Um, decimalizing button here so we've got press it again for an even better answer because we need that decimal so we can look it up in the table 
So it's 0 0.6666 reoccurring. So well, let's write down um, get the pen back up. 0 0.6 and we can keep going, 0 0.66666. Have a look at our table. And we can notice that we've got 0 0.6, that's here. So 0 0.6 is there. So we're going to be in this in this um, row here, going this way. And if you look along the top, we've got our second decimal places here. So 0 0.60, 0 0.61, 0 0.62, 0 0.63, all the way up to 0 0.66. Now you could be forgiven for looking in that table, but you've got to think our value was 0 0.6666 reoccurring. So if you round that up to two decimal places, you're going to get 0 0.67. So we're actually interested in this column here. Okay, and we're looking for the value where those two columns meet. Let's just have a look. Let's just highlight it up. So we're, we've got, got this value here. This is the value at 0.67. So there's our probability. And that represents, if you look at the diagram at the top, that actually represents the area to the left of our line. So this value here, 0.7857. I'm just going to grab that and bring it with us. So if I pull this probability out and take it with us, we can put it onto our diagram. Let's go back and stick it in. So that actually represents this area to the left, the left hand side of our line. Yeah, she represents the area. Excuse me, I'm moving that. Grab the pen. The area to the left. So it actually represents this bit here. We don't want that. We want the area to the right of the line. We actually wanted this bit here. So how are we going to get that value? Well, we know that probabilities add up to 1. So all we've got to do to finish that off is do 1 minus our probability, which is 0.74857. And if we type it into the calculator, work that out, it will come out at 0.25 something, something, something. Okay? So there we go. We've got our probability. It's 0.25. Dot, dot, dot. Is that, let's go back to our statement, is that less than a third? Is 0.25 less than a third? Well, what is a third as a decimal? So a third is 0.33 reoccurring. Okay, so we can clearly see that 0.25 is definitely less than 0.33. So we can agree, he is correct. Um, his statement is justified. So, um, question three, part B. Um, we've got a guy, George, here. He's researching the average number of sleeping hours per day among adults in his village. He's gone round and he's asked 15 adults from the village, how long do you sleep? And the data is put, presented in the table here for us to have a look at. And the question says, compare the average number of sleeping hours per day um, from the 15 adults to those in the general population. So from part A, we're going to be looking at, um, we had a mean of 6 from part A for the general population and a standard deviation of 1.5. So on average, the general population sleeps 6 hours you know, per night on average. So we've got to really work out the, the same values for our sample. So the, the mean of the village and the standard deviation of sleeping hours for the village. And in the mark scheme, there's no, no marks for working out the standard deviation by hand. So it's, it's actually really useful to learn how to do this on your calculator. And I would advise you to, to relearn the method because it's so quick and so efficient and you don't get any extra marks for working out by hand. So I mean, I would show you how to do it on my calculator, but unfortunately, my calculator has decided to be German for this evening. So I'm actually going to, with a growth mindset, show you by um, some screen grabs, and I set up a little method here for you. So if you have a look, um, just grab your Casio calculator. Others are available. I'm sorry if, if you have a Sharp or something, um, but the Casio ones, you just press Mode, so and this screen will appear. And then you want the stat section. So you press 2 to get stat section. You get all these options here. You're looking for the, the 1 minus variance bit. So you press 1. And then it comes up with a table. And you've just simply got to put your numbers from 
the table here into the calculator table and just enter those numbers all the way down in that column. And once you've done, trust me, you press AC, okay? My students have this sort of reaction when I tell them that, thinking they're gonna clear all the data, but you just press AC and then you press shift and then one, and that will give you, if you look above the number one, there's like a little section that says stat. So you press shift then one, and then this screen appears here and you want the variance um, statistics. So you press four for variance and then this screen appears. So you've got these four options here. Number two is X bar, so that's the mean. And number three is your standard deviation. So if you've entered the data correctly and you get the values, you should end up with um, some values of 6.2 for the mean and 1.03 for the standard deviation. So once you've got that, you can start to compare the two distributions. So, I mean, what comments can we make about the general population and the village about the mean? Well, the mean's slightly higher here. So you can say, and this is grabbed from the mark scheme, um, the village, they sleep slightly longer than the general population. Okay, that's all they're sort of asking for at that point. And standard deviation, I've actually marked on some, they're not to scale, they're just sort of a very rough guide as to what the standard deviation tells us, it's there's 99.8% I think of the data is within three standard deviations. So it's actually telling you the spread of the data. Okay, so the bigger the standard deviation, the more spread out the data is. So which one has the smaller spread? Well, again, the village has a smaller standard deviation. So here it says their sleeping hours have a smaller spread than the general adult population and that is all that they're requiring for you to say okay so um, it's nice to see what the mark scheme actually wants and where where those comments are coming from in terms of the data part c um, part c we are george has decided to identify the adults in his survey um, whose sleeping hours are more than one standard deviation away from the mean um, use the mean and the standard deviation from the general, and they've highlighted this bit, the general adult population, identify these adults. So we're not using the village statistics, we're actually using the adult one. So I've grabbed the, the adult um, stats here. So remember this was from part A, the mean was six, the standard deviation was 1.5. And it says, identify the adults that are one standard deviation away from the mean. So you see, I marked on this, this sort of standard deviation marks, uh, these blue lines here, to show one standard deviation, two, three, and the other way, one, two, three. And what I've done is I've just added 1.5 to the mean to get 7.5. That's one standard deviation away. Let me mark that in for you. So this is this section here. And I've also taken off one standard deviation. So another to go to the left, it would be... 4.5 and sorry my line slightly off there but doing my best um, and basically what it says is identify the adults that fall outside of this region so people in this section here and the people in this section here who sleeps less than 4.5 hours a night and who sleeps more than 7.5 hours and all you've got to do is look at your table really and pick out those people so if we're looking through and we're trying to find people above 7.5 or below 4.5. So scan through the figures and see if you can see whether well, there's a good, someone here, J, adult J, sleeps eight hours, so that's definitely above 7.5. And also I've got O here, also above 7.5. And below, um, K, K looks like they are below 4.5 if they sleep four hours. So. Those are your answers, J, K, and O. And obviously, to show you're working, you would just have to show that you've added on um, 1.5 to 6 to go one standard deviation above the mean and subtract 1.5 to go one standard deviation below the mean. Um, I hope that helps, guys. Um, keep checking the website for new Core Maths uh, exam solutions videos.